this meeting of the Mawa Board of Education for February 19th. Would you please take roll call, Mr. Gleeker? <laughs> Mrs. Cohn. Here. Mr. Copland. Here. Mr. De Silva. Here. Mr. Denise. Here. Mr. Gallo. Here. Mr. Kazmarski. Ms. Conico. Here. Dr. Morthy. Here. And Ms. Barron. Here. Adequate notice of agenda of this meeting has been provided to the Ridgewood News and the records specifying that the Mawa Board of Education will meet on February 19th, 2020 in the administrative offices, 60 Ridge Road, Mawa, New Jersey. A copy was filed with the township clerk. Would everyone please rise for a salute to the flag? Miss Dr. Morthy, would you please lead us? Absolutely. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, I have a motion to uh, recess to executive session. Ms. Conico, second by Dr. Morthy. Um, we will be back in probably about a half an hour. I have a motion to reconvene to public action. Uh, let Ms. Conico follow by second by Mr. Gallo. Agenda questions. Please limit your questions at this time to resolutions under new business on this agenda. As a matter of fairness, you are asked to limit your questions to no more than one and your remarks to no longer than three minutes. If you are here representing a group, please identify yourself, the group, and your position in the group. If you are here as an individual, please give us your name and address. This section of public participation will be limited to 15 minutes. Please specify the resolution you are referring to in your question. We have a motion to open the meeting to the public. Mr. Gallo, second by Mr. DeSilva. motion to close to the public. Ms. Conico, second by Mr. De Silva. Dr. Schoen, do you have a report for us? I do. Is this on? This is on. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I just wanted to report this evening, the board was aware, um, but we had the opportunity to have some, some pretty special visitors with us um, back on February 13th. Um, all um, school districts in Bergen County have the opportunity to have security drills um, overseen, um, observed, commented on, um, debriefing afterwards. Um, and we had members from the New Jersey Department of Education, the prosecutor's office, the state police. Of course, Dr. Turo is our security guru. Um, we had Chief Jaffe and three members from his department. Uh, there was probably about 15, 18 of us uh, that went between um, the high school, started at the high school, and then we went over to uh, Ramapo Ridge and we practiced a lockdown drill, and we made it very clear. Uh, the principals were with us, they knew what was happening, but they could stand in the hallway and kind of observe what it is that happened. Um, they asked that a couple of teachers join them, because usually teachers are in the room following protocol, and in this case, we had them out in the hallways to be able to observe. Um, drill probably was conducted in about seven or eight minutes uh, per building. Unfortunately for the Ridge, it was in the middle of a sixth grade lunch. Uh, so that was kind of crazy, but it's a good time to do it when you have a large group of students in one place and figure out what can be fixed. Um, I want to say that the principals and the building and the teachers and the students overall were outstanding. Um, our work to date, having seen it firsthand, was, was pretty incredible. Are there things to work on? Sure. Are there always improvements that we can make? Um, without a doubt, but everyone that we were with, right, Mike, were extremely complimentary of our schools, of the security process and protocol we have in place, how quickly um, our students and staff responded, and more importantly, they did throw us something midway. Uh, there is um, words and a sequence of things that we do to come out of a drill. Um, they asked us to come out of a drill differently with different people, um, and the staff didn't move, and the kids didn't move as well. Pretty incredible. Um, to do it and to watch it happen because you're kind of scared when you invite people into your houses, right? And you hope that everything's going to work as planned. So I did share the board kind of letting you know it went well and there were some, you know, worthwhile recommendations. Uh, but I did want to say publicly I want to thank um, the New Jersey Department of Education, the prosecutor's office, um, and most importantly our Mawa Police Department under uh, Steve Jaffe. Um, the reason we are the way we are is because he's trained us to be how we are. Um, and I think it's important to have had him there and to be a partner in all of this. We've always trusted in his security measures, and uh, we're fortunate, our staff and our students, because of him. So I just want to say thank you. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Gleeker, would you please? Sure. Um, Budget. 
for those of you uh, uh, that may recall from the uh, past few years, preliminary budget looks very well in uh, March. We were asked to go to office to talk about what we do. And then the final budget would be approved by consultation at the end of April, early May after we have uh, reported the first month of the fall. So we are in that process. Just want to let everybody know uh, where we are and uh, give you some action on the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Fair. Yes, I have a brief report. Um, the first piece is a highlight uh, to our animation students who were uh, recently showcased at the Rampo College Black Maria Film Festival. Um, Joe Kosdra, Lucas Chavez, Evan Sedano, and Sofia Mastrangelo um, submitted drawn animations, Google animations, and stop motion films that they worked on in their class uh, with Miss Rotondella. Um, during this event and uh, the day after the event, students had the opportunity to sign up for animation workshops led by Marvel movie animators and uh, had the opportunity to network with the teaching staff. So uh, we just want to say uh, congratulations to those students. Um, just a, a notification that um, our annual Cat in the Clubhouse uh, <coughs> reading by our staff of Mawa Public Schools will take place. Am I taking your, your stuff, Kim? Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> good. Um, oh, okay. Um, well, you did, yeah. you did so, take one, but oh, that's okay. Because okay, I have a lot here. So that will take place uh, Thursday, February 27th from uh, 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock uh, at Franklin Crossing, Rampo Bray Community Center, Rampo Ridge Clubhouse on Lydia Lane, Mawa Library, and the Fardale Trinity Church. Um, on uh, For item 18E, I just want to welcome back uh, Alyssa Thievon, who's being recommended uh, for hire uh, for a teacher of Spanish position at Mawa High School. Uh, she's worked here in the past and uh, she has missed us and we're happy to have her. Um, and uh, last but not least, at our uh, last Board of Ed meeting, uh, we mentioned uh, the beginning of our central registration process. Just uh, another reminder that kindergarten central registration will take place on March 12th and March 13th uh, at the Thunderbird Think Tank. Thank That's you very it. much. Thank you. Okay, um, uh, Mr. John Pascal announced that seniors Hayden Delena and Jonathan E. Coa have been selected as candidates to represent New Jersey for application to the U.S. Presidential Scholars Program. This scholars program was established in 1964 by executive order of the president to recognize and honor some of our nation's most distinguished graduating high school seniors. In 1979, the program was extended to recognize students who demonstrate exceptional talent in the visual, creative, and performing arts. In 2015, the program was again extended to recognize students who demonstrate ability and accomplishment in career and technical education fields. So each year, over 4,500 candidates are identified for the component of the program that focuses on academic achievement and based on having scored exceptionally well on the SAT or the ACT. Eligible students are U.S. citizens and legal permanent U.S. residents graduating or receiving diploma between January and August of the current program year and who have taken the SAT or ACT assessment on or before the preceding October. So we wish Hayden and Jonathan luck as they participate in the application process. With some updates from the Mawa Schools Foundation, um, Give Back Night at Mawa Bar and Grill will take place on Thursday, March 26th. 10% uh, of all food sales will be donated back to the MSF. Um, the Thunderbird Run, if you want to mark your calendars, is for April 26th at Mawa High School. Uh, the Grant Cycle is opening uh, mid-March. Uh, then, then there is a trippy tray that will take place on 6-5 at Ramapo Ridge. Um, do more about that um, later on. And then for um, in the uh, near future, it's actually November, mark your calendars for November 12th because the Mawa Schools Foundation will be celebrating their 20th anniversary. So um, look forward to some information on that in the future. And I just have a little uh, information on the future problem solving teams. Several of our future problem solving teams qualified for the future problem solving state bowl. In fact, there was a three way tie for first place in the middle division, grades seven through nine, between Mawa High School team. And um, I said many of you are gonna recognize the names and I hope that I pronounce your names correctly, students. We're very proud of you. Uh, Natalie Morgan, Ryan Stanford, Mason Anton, and Arnav Tendulkar, their current eighth graders, Mark Lashinsky, Kaylee Hyung, Zoe Wen, and Sophia Doroshensko, and current seventh graders, Sakith Modeli, 
Claire Lee, Kaylin Grisby, and Cameron Sanchez. Uh, seventh graders, Seda Sahagian, Emily De Silva, <laughs> <laughs> and Emily Jacobo came in fifth and also qualified for the tournament. Qualifying as an individual is Julia Hermanson. We had seven, seven sixth grade teams compete in the junior division and placed first through fifth. The three teams have been offered an invitation to compete at the state level. First place was uh, Nishi Padaban. Bandla, Casey P Pieklo, <laughs> Cole Baruda, and Ryan Sumner. And second place was Jean Chung, Anjan Adhim. You can help me with these names if anyone would like it. <laughs> <laughs> Adhiyama Man, Connor Soha, and Vidya Prasad. And third place was Vishika Ranka, Christopher Foreman, Luke McHugh, and Umer Kazi. So the students mentioned will be participating in the State Bowl Internet Competition on Friday, February 28th. And the students will represent, then present their action plans and receive the results on Saturday, March 21st at Queen University. So we're very, very proud of all our students. And that is all that I have for this week. Do we have any board committee reports? Go ahead. Go ahead, you go first. Ladies first. Oh, ladies first. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm gonna report on um, instructional and curriculum. Um, so we had an update um, from Mr. Corey about uh, the instructional technology at Ramapo Ridge Middle School. Um, some exciting things, so I wanted to bring it to the board. Um, currently, grades six to eight, the integration of instructional technology includes the modified one-to-one -one laptop program. The program consists of laptop carts on the sixth grade level and one-to-one -one laptops during the day for seventh and eighth graders, which means their laptop is individualized to them, stays on the cart, but in sixth grade, it's not. The conversation was that in seventh and eighth grade, it's been a very successful program, the one-to-one -one modified, and they'd like to now, earlier time frame than they anticipated, they wanted to do it in September, now they'd like to do it now itself, coming in like March. Uh, because it's been su a successful program um, in the seventh and eighth grade. So it would be the, still modified on a cart that the laptop is then assigned to each student. So the student takes their laptop and it's assigned to them. Doesn't leave the building, correct, um, Dr. Deturo? If I say any misspeak, please correct me. So it doesn't leave the building, but you have your own individualized one. So they'd like to do that for sixth grade as well. There, um, the conversation was, the reasoning for this is they've made some changes at the Ridge um, to support the one-to-one -one initiative, this modified one-to-one, -one, um, by creating new facility uh, spaces. They've brought in new course offerings, like there's now, they sh we spoke about a film class that they have. Um, the increase in the number of 3D printers um, and a very exciting piece uh, through a grant from the Mawa Schools Foundation in virtual reality and augmented reality. Uh, now, would people like to know the difference between <laughs> virtual and yes, augmented Dr. reality? Dr. Morgan, yes. <laughs> because I thought that was a bit weak, because none of us knew the difference. So <laughs> virtual reality, my, uh, Dr. Detora could help me, you put the goggles on, all right, and the you see the, uh, you pick and it comes up on the goggles, right, what you're seeing. The augmented reality, you still wearing the goggles, cur no. You can wear goggles, but there's also, there's in, at the ridge, there's also kind of almost like a selfie stick. And you put the, the camera. And you like touch it in that move. <laughs> you, you, you put it over an object and it, and it, and it modifies the object. That you're able to then manipulate and, and see it close up. Close up. So like if you wanted to see, say, the Coliseum or something in Rome. Right, and the, the course offering, there's 900 offerings or something in this VR and AR world, again, through a grant from the Mawa Schools Foundation. So kids, very excited, teachers, very excited about VR and AR, because again, if they're teaching about Rome and the Coliseum, the kids can go and actually, it can come up, they can see it, it's really exciting stuff. Um, They've also improved the uh, professional development offerings for teachers and staff. Um, another thing he said, which was exciting, is they actually did a technology assembly 
for the students to kind of talk about the all the, the VR and AR technology and so on. So exciting, I, I think the thing that was most exciting is to see that they, they kind of piloted this in seventh and eighth grade. They weren't sure about the sixth graders, but to see that our students stepped up, um, have handled this uh, process extremely well, and that now that the sixth graders can come in earlier. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. So that was a very exciting at the meeting. The other thing is at the high school, um, there's gonna be an addition of uh, two courses, which was very exciting as well. Um, one is an elective, uh, which is gonna be discovering identity through contemporary young adult literature. That's for open to 10th through 12th graders. And the other one is going to be uh, more like a seminar course, uh, writing the truth, memoir, nonfiction, and war and literature, and that's for mostly 12th grade English. So again, really exciting stuff. So thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? I'll go first. Uh, community relations, we met a couple weeks ago, uh, discussed a bunch of different topics, but one that I wanted to highlight to the rest of the board is the expert directory. Uh, the information was sent out by Dr. Schoen uh, probably two, three weeks ago, maybe even longer, I'm not even sure. Um, the info was sent out to the school community, uh, all parents and anyone within the K through 12 community, pre-K through 12 community received it. One of the things that we're looking to be doing will be reaching out to outside that community. Uh, we'll be looking to reach out to the different service organizations in town, Chambers of Commerce, Elks, Rotary, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we'll be doing that as a committee, but we're gonna be asking also the board members to also please get that information out to your network of people. Um, the idea here is to grow that directory to the point where it's so robust, that there's so much information in there, there's so many different resources for our student, our teachers to access, it's just a no-brainer for them to go to whatever, whatever they need it. Uh, the more people, the more information, the more data that's in that directory, the better. So if you have the opportunity, please reach out to, if you're in a group, whatever, whatever you guys are doing on your own time, please send it out. Uh, we'd like to build that as much as we can, and as I mentioned, the, the committee itself is gonna be reaching out to on behalf of the board and, and the district to these other groups to ask them to pass it around to their members. It's a great opportunity to get involved and, and help out the district. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Um, just briefly from finance facilities, is, as um, Kyle announced, uh, the budget process is beginning. We will be meeting immediately after this meeting with Dr. Shaw. Um, I also want to draw your attention to 17X, which was that asterisk item, and I thank uh, Kyle for alerting to you to its uh, purpose and nature, and we look forward. Um, this is an initiative that dovetails with something we started in the fall with the buildings assessment with Lane Associates and also our strategic planning initiative. So this is a, um, an initiative that we'll be looking at over the next year or two, and we're very excited to be working with Lane. It was a difficult decision-making process. We had 10 uh, submissions. Uh, Kyle and Lauren boiled that down to five. We had in-person interviews, and then we took three finalists and put them through one more ringer, and uh, we made the decision to re to recommend um, uh, Land Associates to work with us on this um, exciting project. Um, the other thing is, um, we can talk about strategic planning. We had a wonderful strategic planning uh, session on February 6th, and the feedback that I, at least I got, just speaking from the people I spoke to, is the, the, the participants were really excited by letting their thought, sort of their thought process run wild. That, that was the whole purpose of, the, of this particular phase of the effort. And I really just want to thank all of our staff members, not just the folks here who, who um, triggered this, but also all our teachers and faculty that came out and engaged in the process in a very positive and constructive way. And to have all those voices in the mix is very, very important for us, and it will only advance our um, program and what we can do for kids over the next number of years, and I'm very excited by it, and I look forward to April 23rd, and I wanna, I wanna thank all the folks who last summer said, gee, let's do strate strategic planning. A couple of things that I think was really important to do, it's, it's for an organization to sort of expose itself to the public in sort of an open and transparent way and to invite people to say good, bad, and different is, is courageous. But I think we have a lot of stuff to be proud of in this district. We also, we have areas where we know we could do better. 
And by exposing ourselves in this way, I think it was, um, it's a very positive thing for the district. I think it's a great way for people to plug in to the district. Um, and so far, I'm very excited by it, and I look forward to April 23rd when we meet one last time. <laughs> but, and I just want to thank everybody who, who's made all this stuff happen so far. So, thank you. Yes, Mr. Jones. The uh, Policy Committee has several policies for first reading on tonight's <coughs> agenda. Uh, the first one is Policy and Regulation 1642. This is new and it's a mandatory uh, policy regulation. It pertains to sick leave and how it's accrued for employees who are not steadily employed by the district, such as substitute teachers. Uh, the next one is policy 3159. It's a mandatory policy. It was revised to incorporate a new law where if a teacher staff member fails to report an incident of child abu abuse, then the board is now required to submit a report to the state board of examiners who may revoke or suspend a teacher staff member certificate. Uh, policy 3211 is a new policy that outlines a code of ethics. Policy and regulation 3218 and 4218 could be taken together um, the only thing that's different between the two is that 3218 um, pertains to the teaching staff and 4218 pertains to the support staff. These are mandatory policies and regulations that have been revised to include staff members who are suspected to be under the influence of drugs or alcohol during work hours or at a school-sponsored function and has been ordered to perform a blood test now must provide those results to the superintendent and or if not then the board can presume that the staff member tested positive and was under the influence. Uh, the next one is policy and regulation 6112. Um, the policy has been revised and it's mandatory. The regulation is a new regulation for the district and is also mandatory. Uh, this pertains to the reimbursement of federal and other grant expenditures and are revised to align with the recent changes to the Department of Education policy and procedure guidelines. The next one is policy and regulation 7440. Again, this is a mandatory um, policy and regulation. It has been revised to require that school districts equip each public elementary and secondary school building with at least one panic alarm that is directly linked to local enforcement authorities in addition to providing local enforcement uh, copies of current blueprints and maps of all schools and school grounds in the district and to provide revised copies to law enforcement upon changes. The next one is policy 8600, uh, revised and mandatory. The regulation 8600 is revised and not mandatory. Uh, they, uh, the policy and regulation require all buses be equipped with certain safety features and specifications and to incorporate by reference lengthy sections of the applicable transportation statutes and administrative code. Policy and Regulation 8630 is mandatory, revised to include a new law that requires a Board of Education upon being notified that a school bus driver employed by the board has had their driver's license suspended or revoked, provide a statement to the Department of Education that the school bus driver is no longer operating a school bus for the Board of Education in addition to a safety education program for school bus drivers and school bus aides now must be administered twice per calendar year where previously there was no legal requir requirement regarding the number of times the program needed to be administered each year. Policy 8670 is mandatory, has been revised to change disabled to special needs when referring to a student with disability. And the last one, the regulation 9150.1, is revised to allow 
classroom observation by a professional at the request of a parent or a guardian. In addition to that, uh, we had our policy meeting um, today before the Board of Ed meeting and we finished the 5,000 series of policies. We did, we'll put them on for first reading as well as the second reading of these at our next board meeting. It was really a great, great meeting, Mr. Denise. It really was, the, the committee was just, it was awesome. What is the 5,000 series? It's a lot of policies. <laughs> Thank you we'll very much. All <laughs> your work. <laughs> Thank you. Is that it for everybody? Okay. Um, do you have any other board member remarks or additional comments on any non agenda items? Anyone? Yes. Just I attended the last Bergen County School Board meeting held at Glen Rock High School and it was on school law. Talked about transgender rights. Um, I mean, just to give you a fairly good fitness and talking about their programs for. Um, students new to the country that don't know the language. It was interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, um, I'd like to um, take old business. We have a motion to move on old business. Mr. Gallo, second by Dr. Murphy. Ms. Sacone. Yes. Mr. Coplin. Yes. Mr. De Silva. Yes. Mr. Denise. Yes. Mr. Gallo? Yes. Ms. Conico? Yes. Dr. Morthy? Yes. And Ms. Barron? Yes. Um, now I'd like to take 17A through KK and have a motion to proceed on that. Mr. Coplin, second by Mr. Denise. Does anyone have any um, comments on any of these items? Ms. Barron? Yes. On 17W, I just want to highlight that we're starting, we're voting on the uh, establishment of the Memorial Scholarship uh, for Marcus Kale. Uh, for those alums that have played soccer, um, I'm just throwing this out there, I saw this today, the soccer team is uh, putting together an event, I believe in August, don't quote me on that, I think it's August, uh, it's going to be an alumni game, the soccer team itself is going to be doing some stuff to raise some money for the scholarship, so if you, uh, if you are an alum that played soccer, please look for that information out there, it's floating out in the, in the Facebook world, in the social media universe right now, but uh, keep an eye out for that, great, it sounds like a really great event for, this, for the scholarship. As well, just I would like to take that W um, item out and vote on that individually. If that's okay with the board. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank um, whoever donated the refrigerator to Joyce Kilmer School. Thank you very much Irene for that. Lahr. And Irene Lar. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you very yeah, much, I, Ms. Mar. I, I found that out right before this meeting. <laughs> thank you very much for finding that out. Nine forty-five. <laughs> and um, I'd also like to thank. Um, the donations, there was a donation from Ms. Ca Ms. Carol Croder that's related to the implementation of a therapy dog at Lenape Meadow Schools and Lenape, depending on how you'd like to say that, and the donation, <laughs> Lenape, and the donation um, from Ms. Stephanie Sandusky, also related to the implementation of a therapy dog, a do therapy dog services at Betsy Ross and George Washington School. Thank you very much. Um, we really appreciate all, every donation. Um, can I have a motion to proceed on um, A through KK? Are we already did that? Uh, yeah, I have the motion and second. Okay, great. Would you please take roll call? Yeah. Um, we're going to leave out W, exclude though, w. and we'll yep. exclude W. For 17A through KK without W, <laughs> Ms. Sacone. Yes. Mr. Coplin. Yes, but I'm abstaining on check number 98357. Mr. De Silva. Yes. Mr. Denise. Yes. Mr. Gallo. Yes, except I will be abstaining in 17A on check number 098318. Ms. Conico. Yes. Dr. Morthy. Yes. And Ms. Barron. Yes. And now I'd like a motion to move on 17W, please. Mr. Gallo, second by Mr. Coplin. And I would like to read this. It's the Marcus Kale Memorial Scholarship. Um, resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Mala Board of Education establishes the Marcus Kale Memorial Scholarship. Would you please take roll call? Ms. Cohn. Yes. Mr. Coplin. Yes. Mr. De Silva. Yes. Mr. Denise. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Gallo. Yes. Ms. Conico. Yes. Dr. Morthy. Heartfelt yes. And Ms. Barron. Yes. Thank you. We have a motion to proceed on new business A through II. 
Dr. Morthy, second by Ms. Kleinfeld. Do we have any discussion, comments on any of these items? I want to thank the volunteers for volunteering their time. Thank you. Mrs. Cohn? Yes. Mr. Copland? Yes. Mr. De Silva? Yes. Mr. Denise? Yes. Mr. Gallo? Yes. Mr. Kismarski? Yep. Uh, Ms. Conico? Yes. Dr. Morthy? Yes. And Ms. Barron? Yes. <coughs> public questions or comments? This section of public participation will be limited to 15 minutes. May I have a motion to open to the public? Mr. Copland, second by Mr. De Silva. Yes, come on up to the microphone. Just state your name and, and your address, please. Hi, I'm uh, John John Matisich. I'm here uh, representing the Mawa Ice Hockey Association, not as an individual. Um, a little while back, I contacted the Board of Ed about sending uh, an email out uh, about our upcoming spring registration. And I was told that since we're not part of the Mawa Youth Sports Boosters, um, that we wouldn't be able to do it. So. Um, I'm just here to ask the, uh, the board to consider, uh, reconsider that. Um, Mawa Ice Hockey Association is the only ice hockey association in town. Um, I'm the president of the board of the association. And um, uh, I guess a little while back, we contacted the Sports Boosters program. And the question came up is why we're not part of that. And uh, the way I understand it, is because hockey is so expensive, uh, we'd basically blow out their budget. So um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it's expensive, <laughs> trust me. I have two boys that play. Uh, my, my older son's a freshman at the high school, and my younger son's in eighth grade at Ramapo Ridge. So um, that said, um, we, uh, we do a lot of fundraising because our goal, uh, we're, we're, not a, we're not an elite program, we're not a travel program, we're for uh, kids who just want to try hockey at the basic level, at the rec level, and uh, my goal as president of the association is to make it affordable for everybody. So we do a lot of fundraising, we do a golf outing every year, we do a pasta dinner, we have a booth at Mawa Day, um, and uh, we've been pretty successful raising money. But the spring is kind of our big uh, season because that's when we don't compete against travel players. Um, we've been pretty successful bringing kids up to the program where they start out with us and then they move on to higher levels of play. Um, so the, uh, the spring season is important to us because we're not competing against the travel program and we get more registrations in the spring. Um, the other thing that we do is we support the high school hockey program. Um, we, uh, last year we donated $12,000 to the hockey program uh, at the high school. Um, we also will be doing a $1,000 scholarship for a high school senior this year um, as well. And um, basically what I'm asking is just if, if we could send our, if, you know, forward our email out to your distribution list. Um, whenever we have a registration or possibly a fundraiser or something like that, it'd probably be four or five times a year. Um, and I'm not sure. So. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Okay. It's probably one of the longest meetings we've had in a while. Yes. So <laughs> I'm Thank you for sticking around. No, no, it's okay. I'm no, it's real okay. sorry that you had to. No, no, to no. I, I appreciate the opportunity to get up here you, and, you and did, talk to you. You did a fabulous job. I yeah. could have saved you a trip. Okay. I called you back this afternoon. I saw that. But I your voicemail was filled. Yes. I said a oh follow-up. No. <laughs> oh no. But it was. No, no. Um, I, I, I was literally checking my emails <laughs> there. And I saw it. As soon as you <laughs> called me, I called you back. I also, right. I also no, I appreciate up, the call I back as well. I also followed up with an email. When you check that, there's going to be an email from Connie Lee okay. asking you to please call me. Okay. Uh, you yeah. have been more than generous um, with our students over the years. Mm -hmm. Thank um, you. From ice hockey time to uniforms, mm -hmm. um, it would be our pleasure. Okay. We'll send it out on Friday. All right. Four Thank you so much. Year. Are we good to go with that? Because if I inundate parents with all sorts of things, they four, stop four is fine. You got it. Consider Thank time. you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. We have a motion to close to the public. Ms. Zacone, second by Dr. Morthy. And um, we have a motion to adjourn the meeting. Mr.
Silva, second by Mr. Gow. 